I think now you'll begin to see why uh, I waited so long to do this. Here is a, a triangle. I think it's an acute triangle. And we have created, I have created perpendicular bisectors that intersect at the same point. And you'll notice there's three segments that are intersecting right there. And so therefore we have concurrent lines. Okay, we have a line segment DG, which if we were to continue, it would be a line G, DG. We have line segment DE, again, which would be line DE. And we have line segment DF, which could be line DF. Okay, and those three lines intersect at one point. Okay, now interesting things about what we're going to do in this triangle. Everything we're talking about is going to intersect at one point. So all of these things are going to be concurrent. You may have to extend the lines. You may have to do some, draw some auxiliary lines or whatever. But they're all going to be concurrent lines, and they're all going to have a point of concurrency. Okay? The point of concurrency for this one is called circumcenter. Okay? Now, it's unique in that it has a characteristic. And this is why this becomes very, 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 can become complex. What we've got is the circumcenter, the point of concurrency of perpendicular bisectors, is the same distance from every corner or vertex of this thing. Okay? So if we draw these particular segments in from the vertices to the circumcenter, they are all going to be congruent. Now when we do things freehand, we sometimes get out of line. But let's check and see. That's about 13. Oh, look at that. That's about 13. That's right at 13. So sure enough, these three things are congruent. Okay? So what we've got here is the point of concurrency, the circumcenter. By drawing those concurrent lines, we have created the ability to draw three other segments that are going to be what? Congruent. So all of a sudden now we have segment AD is congruent to segment BD is congruent to segment CD. Well that also means that AD is equal to BD is equal to CD by definition of congruency. Okay? Now why in the world would you ever want to find the point where the corners are the same distance from it? Well city planning planning parks, so forth and so on, planning buildings, all kinds of things like that. Let's say somebody donates a triangular piece of land and with the stipulation that you can only park at the intersections of the streets that create the land. Great. So now I've got to have a parking lot at A, B, and C. Why? Because the owner of the land who donated it says that has to happen. Well, what do you want? You don't want all the parking lot A to be filled up and parking lot B and C left alone. In order to accommodate the most number of people and to not have a huge parking lot in one area and not in the others, then you're going to want to locate the main facilities the same distance from all the corners. Well, what point is that? That's the circumcenter. Okay? So you would want to create and locate the circumcenter of that triangle so that you could then put your playground, the main facilities of that park, whatever you are, to come there and then come off of that. Okay, so there's some things to do. Now let's go on. Now, interesting, if these are congruent, what does that do? Let's draw some other things. That means that triangle. A, D, B, triangle B, D, C, and triangle 
C, D, A, they are isosceles. Wow. Understand? I have two sides that are congruent. So therefore, they're isosceles triangles. That means that this angle is congruent to this angle. This angle is congruent to this angle, and this angle is congruent to that angle. Get it? Not only that, because this is a perpendicular bisector, and these are the same, and these are the same. Wow, look at this. This angle is congruent to this one. This angle is congruent to this one. This angle is congruent to that one. You understand all the congruencies we now have? Do you understand all of the algebra problems that can be created in the challenges? It's almost impossible for us not to be able to find the distance using this. Given anything on here, we can find the distance. The other thing that happens is we have right triangles. What theorem can we use to solve right triangles? The Pythagorean theorem. So if we know one of these things, and if we know this, if we know this, Wow, if we know the distance from one of the corners to, to the circumcenter, and we know one of the lines, we can begin to put together what the distances are. So as we begin to create this, one of the things that's going to happen, you're going to see, is these points of concurrency, these concurrent lines, depending on their definitions, are going to begin to create things and ways for us to look at triangles that are totally new and different. Now, get you a little deeper in this, you now have three triangles within that one triangle. Could we do the same thing with each one of those? Yes. We could draw a point of concurrency using perpendicular bisectors within triangle ADB. Start over. Within triangle ADC. Within triangle BDC. Okay? And we can go deeper and deeper and deeper. So all kinds of things happen. One of the other things I want to point out, these are all isosceles triangles. And because they're all uh, isosceles triangles, we've already talked about congruency of triangles. Okay, and we can prove that. We know this angle and this angle are congruent. And we know this angle's angles are congruent. So we have an angle-angle side capability, okay? Angle-angle side, angle-angle side. We know what? Triangle A. DE is congruent to triangle BDE. Triangle BDF is congruent to triangle CDF. Triangle CDG is congruent to triangle ADG. All right? So all of a sudden we've got a lot of congruencies. And where we have congruencies, it's pretty easy for us to find out things. We've got CPCTC, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Okay? So there's a tremendous number of things we can do. Now, one of the things to remember this, we'll summarize this when we get through this, is how do I draw perpendicular bisectors of triangles? Think about it perpendicular bisectors of the sides of a triangle. The definitions of these things typically will tell you how to draw them. What am I going to do? I'm going to bisect what? The sides. What does that mean? I'm going to find the midpoint of each side. And at that midpoint, I'm going to construct what? A perpendicular segment or line. Now, how can that be done? If that triangle is on a coordinate grid, how do we find out what the perpendicular is? Can we bisect that side? Yes. We can determine what the middle of the point is, can't we? We can take, find the midpoint of A and B. We can find that coordinate. Can we find the slope of AB? Yes, we can. Can we determine what the perpendicular slope would be to AB? Yes, we can. If we have a point and we have a slope, can we determine what the equation of that line is? Yes. Can we draw that line? Yes. Can we do that for each one of those? Yes, we can. Understand? So there's all kinds of ways of what we're doing. is We're bringing all this together and putting it together. Everything we've learned, 
We're standing on top of it to build things, build ways of looking at these triangles so that we begin to do real work with them, begin to solve real challenges, real world problems, okay, design things in a real world way, okay? So look at this perpendicular bisector. I'm going to create a midpoint at each side, and we'll draw a perpendicular line at that point to that side. And I'm going to extend those lines until they meet. Okay? All right. Is there anything else here? Seems like I'm leaving something out. Let's go here. Oh, yeah, we got this here. We got these are isosceles and these sets of congruent triangles. Okay? So all kinds of things that happen there. Point of concurrency is the circumcenter. I'll put it down here. Circumcenter is the same distance from each vertex. Call that equidistance. interesting things we want to look at here, characteristics is this. Note it, write it down, and maybe it'll help you. Notice that when we bisect the sides, we're bisecting the sides, that point of concurrency, when we're using perpendicular bisectors to bisect these sides, the point of concurrency is equal distance from what? Not the sides, but from the corners. Okay? Perpendicular bisectors. We're bisecting the sides. We're cutting the sides in half. That point of concurrency is equal distance from the corners. Remember that and see how that contrasts with what we're going to do next. Okay? We'll come back and uh, I'll tell you what, we're going to do some algebra here first and then we'll come back and do angle bisectors. Okay, let's do just a, a simple Fairly simple uh, algebraic uh, challenge using perpendicular bisectors. I've made some other marks on it. I think that are consistent with what we need to do. Let's look at what those marks are and some writing here. I'm going to put a problem up here. Come down here. Now these are perpendicular bisectors, so what do we know about AB? E must be the what? You got it, the midpoint. So that means then that AE is congruent to BE. Ooh, wow. We can do SAS, SSS, can't we? We know this is congruent to that. We know this is congruent to that. Why? Because of definition, we know that. Okay? The circumcenter is the same distance from every corner. So we've got that side, that side. Oh, wow. DE is congruent to DE. Why? Reflexive property. So we've got these two triangles. We just proved they are congruent. Why? SSS. You got it? So that means this is congruent to that, this is congruent to this, and this is congruent to that. Okay, so let's use that to solve a problem. We're given that AC equals 8. Oh, let's, let's change that. Let's change that to 16. Oops, not that. Change that to 16. AC equals 16. Okay, from there to there. DG equals 6. Now, we want to know what BD is. Huh? Wait a minute. You gave me two sides of a right triangle, the legs. You gave me information so I can find the legs of these two triangles, but then you don't want me to find the hypotenuse? Don't know. What do we know about BD and AD? They're congruent, which makes them equal. So if I'm able to find AD, guess what? I know what BD is. You got it? But they give us AC. I just want AG or I want GC. What do we know about those? 
C, G, and A. G are congruent, aren't they? Wow, what do I do with this? So how are we going to solve this? We take 16 divided by 2 equals 8. Therefore, equals A, G. Wow, what can we do with A, G and with D, G? Well, let's say this equals A. 6 equals D, G, which equals B. And we want to find BD, which equals AD, which equals C. Well, we have a little equation that says A squared plus B squared equals C squared. What's A? Okay. C squared equals 8 squared plus 6 squared. So C squared equals... 64 plus 36, C squared equals 100. Now, I'm not interested in C squared. I'm interested in the square root. So what we're going to do is we're going to square root all that. Square root of C squared equals the square root of 100. Therefore, C equals 10. Well, how does that set with that? Well, we have here that AD equals BD equals C. Okay? So that's a way that we can do, use this to find pieces and parts of this triangle. You got it? Now, if we knew some other things, when we get into trig, if we knew some of these angles and so forth, we could actually come in here and learn what some of these other measurements are also. Okay, so perpendicular bisectors and a little sample of some of the algebra that we can do with that. One little side note I want to add to this before I erase it and go to the next thing is I would encourage you to explore all of the congruencies that are in this. Okay, tremendous amount of congruencies that are in there. Explore what happens if we have an equilateral triangle. Explore what happens if we have a right triangle. Explore what happens when we have an acute, acute triangle. Explore what happens when we have an obtuse triangle with this. One of the interesting things to do is to take these concepts, use geometry sketch pad, or a sketch pad of some sort, to actually create those dynamically, something you can move, and move that and shape that, that triangle any way you want to, to see what happens to it. Okay? Uh, it's very interesting to see what happens. What's going to happen to this thing when it's equilateral? Explore those congruences, explore those concepts.